Howdy folks, it's me, Josh. As I'm sure a lot of you know, before Germany first united in 1871, it was just a patchwork of numerous different smaller states that was largely dominated by Austria. But Prussia would soon come to completely shatter Austrian dominance over Germany, uniting it under themselves, completely forcing Austria out of all internal German affairs. And yet, despite this, Austria would end up allying with Germany, becoming the central powers. Why? And what if, in an alternate timeline, Austria had, instead, joined the Entente? Okay, first the obvious question. Why the heck did Austria, after all that Prussia had put them through by kicking them out of Germany, decide to just forget that any of it ever happened and make friends? That seems a little silly, right? Well, when you put it in the context of Austria's situation at the time, it actually makes quite a bit more sense. Although Austria had long been the dominant power of Germany, dominating the Holy Roman Empire for centuries, they, through their ruling House of Habsburg, had been spreading their influence far outside of just Germany, most notably into Hungary. And after the destruction of the Holy Roman Empire, they would end up consolidating those lands into the Austrian Empire. However, in the aftermath of the Napoleonic Wars, nationalism was growing among numerous different people groups across Europe, including the many non-Germans living under a German empire with a German emperor who is the head of the German confederation. And while any sane empire would realize that they were far too divided for their own good and should try to reform and refocus to resolve that problem, the Austrians were not any sane empire. Instead, the Austrians decided, you know what would be a great idea? to do absolutely nothing about our internal problems and try to dominate Germany, Italy, and the Balkans all at the same time. And that went about as well as you would expect. They lost Italy to the Piedmontese and Germany to the Prussians, but although they would certainly keep feuding with Italy, they didn't with Germany, which seems like they would have cared much more about. So, why not? Well, there are a couple of main reasons. First of all, the Balkans. As nationalism spread across the European continent, numerous Slavs began pushing back against both Austrian and Ottoman rule. And as the Ottoman Empire weakened, Russia decided it would be a great idea to stoke pan-Slavic nationalism in order to start revolts and spread their own influence. So, of course, Austria began to freak out that if this pan-Slavism grew too much, their Slavs would revolt against them. And so, since they didn't really have any other choice, the Austrians began pushing for greater influence in the Balkans in order to make sure that this didn't happen, meaning that they put much less focus on trying to dominate Germany. And reason number two is Bismarck. Prussia waged three different wars in order to unite Germany, but only two that are really worth mentioning, those being the Austro-Prussian War of 1866 and the Franco-Prussian War of 1870. Now, Otto von Bismarck knew that, since Germany was in the dead center of Europe, if any two of Austria, Russia, and France allied, then Germany would be surrounded. So, his goal was to make sure that he could keep at least two of them on his side. And since Germans and Frenchmen don't really mix, Russia and Austria it was. So, after the Austro-Prussian War, Bismarck made it a point to make as few demands as possible in order to keep Austria from holding a grudge against them. And though this did work in the long term, it definitely didn't keep Austria from immediately being pissed about losing all influence in Germany. And so, by the time of the Franco-Prussian War, Austria wanted to avenge their defeat and once again go to war against Prussia. But, as France proved to be, uh less than capable, the Austrians saw that there was no chance of winning and kinda just had to sit there and watch as Prussia took control of all of Germany. And Austria did hold a grudge about this until those issues in the Balkans reared their ugly head. After Russia won the Russo-Turkish War of 1877, the Russians tried to create a pan-Slavic Bulgarian state which freaked out Austria and worried that this crisis would cause his German-Austrian-Russian alliance to collapse, Bismarck tried to mediate a compromise. 
But in the ensuing Congress of Berlin, Russia felt cheated by having to give up some of their gains and saw Germany as having backstabbed them, and thus began warming up to France instead. And so, with neither Austria nor Germany trusting Russia anymore, they thus decided to sign the Dual Alliance of 1879 in case of an attack from Russia. This alliance was a very unlikely one. Austria and Prussia had been at each other's throats for over a century at this point. But the only reason it happened was because Bismarck desperately wanted to keep intact an alliance that, given the aims of Austria and Russia, was completely impossible. But what if that changed? What if, in an alternate timeline, Austria hadn't allied with Germany? Now, there's plenty of ways that this can be done, but the best way to do this would just be for Bismarck to, instead of trying to keep his impossible alliance intact, side with Russia over the Austrians. Now, Bismarck did want to keep both of them on his side in order to isolate France and keep Germany from being surrounded. In our timeline, Bismarck had tried to deal with this by creating the Reinsurance Treaty with Russia in order to retain their alliance with Austria, but also remain friendly with Russia. But even then, it had an explicit exception in the case of an Austro-Russian war in which Germany would side with Austria against Russia, showing that Germany had to sacrifice one of its allies in order to keep the other. If Bismarck had realized this, it's rather likely he would have sided with Russia against Austria-Hungary. Austria-Hungary was hopelessly divided for its own good, and Germany would have quite a bit to gain from an inevitable Austro-Hungarian collapse by incorporating the German-Austrian lands into Germany. And if Austria-Hungary were to collapse, then it wouldn't matter if they sided with France, because they wouldn't even exist anymore. Now, I'm sure that some of you may say that it's rather un-Bismarck of Bismarck to try to stoke tensions like this after Germany had already been united, but if he saw that he could only choose one of his allies and had to throw the other under the bus, it's not unlikely that he would make an enemy of the weaker one, especially if Germany had more to gain from making an enemy of them. So, as a result, in this alternate timeline, Bismarck sides with Russian claims in the Balkans against Austria-Hungary as Russia secures dominance in the region. And, obviously, Austria would be pissed about this. The only reason Austria put their differences with Germany aside in the first place was because they were willing to back them up against Russia. But now, Austria would keep their grudge against Germany and Prussia and begin to push for a de-unification of Germany as they solidly join a French Entente. Now, this has numerous effects on the way that the alliances in Europe shake out. First of all, the Balkans. If Russia gets its way in the Congress of Berlin, then they end up completely dominating the Balkans as Bulgaria ends up becoming the dominant pan-Slavic state. Now, this would... Funny enough, end up pushing Serbia toward Austria as Austria tries to use Serbia to exert its influence. But with Russian dominance secured, there isn't much they can do. Next up, Italy. Italy had grievances with both France over Tunisia, Nice, and Savoy, and Austria over a whole bunch of land, so they would certainly end up joining the German-Russian alliance as Austria ends up completely surrounded. Then there's Britain. Now, Russia and Austria weren't the only states that had interests in the Balkans, as Britain, wanting to dominate the Mediterranean, did too. And so, if Russia ends up taking complete control over the region, this would jeopardize Britain's position, and as Wilhelm II ends up building up the German navy once again, Britain once again joins the Entente. And lastly, there's the Ottomans. Since Russia would be breathing down their neck, ready to take Constantinople, and since the Entente was the only way out of that that they had, they too would end up siding with the Entente. So this is how the alliances shake out. In the German alliance is Germany, Russia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Italy, and then in the Entente is France, Austria-Hungary, Britain, Serbia, and Montenegro. Now, without the antagonism between Austria and Serbia, Franz Ferdinand is never assassinated, so World War I doesn't start that way. But the war would still inevitably break out, and just looking at this map, Austria-Hungary is screwed. Upon the outbreak of the war, they would be assaulted on all sides and collapse rather quickly. And after the Austro-Hungarian defeat, the German alliance focuses on the west as the French collapse much more easily than in our timeline. 
So, as a result, Germany rather easily ends up winning the war as Austria-Hungary completely collapses in on itself. In the aftermath of the collapse, Germany would annex Austria and Bohemia, Italy would annex all the land that they wanted from Austria, as Bulgaria takes the rest of the Balkans, Russia takes Galicia, Romania takes Transylvania, and Hungary gains independence. Meanwhile, in France, Germany would likely take a little more of Alsace-Lorraine as well as some French colonies, while Italy takes Nice and Savoy as well as Tunisia. And when it comes to the Turks, the Russians would take Constantinople, but the Turks wouldn't be carved up in the same way that they were on our timeline, and so the Ottoman Empire in some form would survive, though it's still very possible an Arab revolt would reduce them just to Anatolia. However, after the war, it's unlikely that this alliance would remain intact. It's very likely that Italy would end up coming into conflict with Bulgaria and Yugoslavia due to conflicting interests in the Balkans, and growing Russian influence in the continent may lead to growing tensions between Russia and Germany. So in the end, as Prussia sees its final victory over the Austrians, the world ends up looking incredibly different to our own. And as tensions begin to grow between the great powers of Europe once again, the world shapes out incredibly different from our timeline. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to stick around for more. And hey, you could also maybe subscribe or something. So that's it for today's video. Well, till next time, see ya.